Hello and welcome to this uh, video about the ghosting feature in Spine. Now if we go to the dope sheet here, um, right above it we have this ghosting button here. I'm just going to click that and we get the ghosting options panel. Now I just made this simple animation here of a bouncing ball. And if I go up here to the ghosting panel, I'm going to set the frames before and after to be active. Now if I scrub the timeline, I can see uh, sort of a, a trail uh, of ghost frames. And the before is the frames that has happened before the uh, current position of the timelines. And the after is what happens after your current position on the timeline. I'm just going to turn both of them on and go through the different options we have in here. Now the first color here uh, is the tints uh, of the before uh, frames and the blue color here is the uh, tint of the uh, ghosting frames after. Then here we have a drop down where we can select the background of each ghosting frame and we can set it to none, set it to the images, currently just, just a uh, solid image um, and then we have a solid here as well which just uh, tints the uh, uh, the background in uh, the same color as as what you have here then we have the silhouette and we have x-ray currently you won't be able to see a difference between silhouette and x-ray but I'll be loading up a different project we'll be able to see the changes or the sorry the difference then we have the before frames and it's just how many frames you want to draw and similar uh, you have the after frames then we have the frame step and this is just um, currently it's set to one that's mean it draws a ghosting uh, frame for each frame if I set it to two I'll be drawing at frame zero two four six eight ten twelve and so on and then we have the uh, keyframes here they work similar to the frames except they only draw where we have a keyframe so currently I have a keyframe frame 0, 12, and uh, 24, which means I have 3 in total. If I scroll here, you can see we have the first one here. Then we have the second one up here. And the last one down here. And now that I've gone to the uh, last frame here, see the uh, first one disappear. That's because we didn't have um, uh, enough frames to actually show it. So... There we go and so on and the keyframe step works similar to the frame step except it uh, looks at how many keyframes we have then we have the uh, options here in the bottom we have uh, anchor on top and loop an anchor is pretty important and as you can see here if I set the frame step to something else than one you can see it's sort of like the frames are moving um, Actually, they're not moving, but uh, it's calculating the offsets of the uh, frames based on your current position. And if I set it to anchor, it will calculate the uh, uh, the uh, ghosting frames here um, based on the frames. So it will draw one for each absolute frame. Uh, as you can see, it, it looks like they're more static and this is uh, good if you want to to match uh, uh, a, a frame of your animation to uh, either a previous or a, a future frame then we have the uh, on top this just draws the ghost uh, frames on top of your actual images then we have looping and uh, looping is uh, enabled or if you also have looping on the timeline this just means that your animation uh, ghosting frames will actually loop through similar to when you're scrubbing it, uh, the timeline or playing with uh, loop on. Now the last feature is, is the offset. I'm just gonna uh, open up a new project and so I can show you this feature a little better. So go to animate mode here and currently as you can see 
uh, there's a lot more going on here and it can be a little difficult to actually see what goes on behind your uh, your character and even if I set it to be on top it might be a little messy and it might be a little hard to to actually make sense of it all so what we can do is we can go in and, and offset the uh, frames I'm just gonna offset them by uh, 17 pixels on the x-axis and this means for each frame we offset it uh, by 17 pixels and uh, it's just 17 pixels per frame so just gonna uh, quit this scale this up here so it might be a little easier to see um, what this is good for is that we can actually see that the the uh, the foot here, which can be a little difficult to not uh, get sliding, is that the heel uh, position, uh, the foot, uh, when it steps down, is it's actually relatively uh, locked down, so we don't have any sliding here. Now, I've of course been in here and I figured out that uh, 17 was a good offset. If I set it to, let's say, 30 instead, we get some sliding here. But with that said, um, I also know that in a game that's the amount of pixel uh, pixels I would want uh, to move my character each frame. Another thing you could use that for is uh, if you already set up your uh, uh, the velocity or the speed uh, that your characters move in your game, you could set up uh, the offset based on that and then do your animations afterwards. So I hope this has been helpful and stay tuned for more videos coming out soon.